I'd like to share a few ways your use of time are affected by or influence the achievement of your goals. Have you ever thought that without some very clear written goals, you never even need to consider managing your time? Time essentials come from objectives well-defined. Time can't be critical if objectives aren't defined. Now, you might be one of those uniquely fortunate individuals who can keep all their objectives and purposes clearly defined in their minds and operate from that. But I wouldn't take the chance. Write your goals down and set careful priorities. Sometimes priorities are determined by the season. For a farmer in springtime, the season dictates his most important activities. During the spring, a farmer must work around the clock, burn the midnight oil, and keep the equipment running because he has only this small window of time for the planting of his crops. One of the difficulties of living in an industrialized society is the losing of the sense of seasons, when to pour it on, when to ease back, when to take advantage. It's easy to keep going from nine to five, year in and year out, and lose a natural sense of priorities and appropriate time. Don't let one year just blend into the next. Keep an eye on your own seasons, lest you lose track of values and substance. Part of setting priorities is learning to separate major activities from minor activities. This is a whole skill in itself, but once you have learned it, it will pay dividends you won't believe. So learn to put everything on your mental scales to be carefully weighed before you spend time or money. And here's a good question to constantly ask. Is this a major or a minor? By asking that question, you will reduce the amazingly natural tendency to spend major time on minor things. In sales training, we are taught that major time is the time spent in the presence of the prospect, while minor time is the time spent on the way to the prospect. If you're not careful, you will spend more time on the way to than in the presence of. So in sales, we teach, don't go across town till you've gone across the street. Wouldn't it be wise to make an evaluation if you're in sales and ask, how much time am I spending in the presence of and how much time on the way to majors and minors? What a great discipline to exercise. It also reads, don't spend minor time on major things. It's easy to get values mixed up. The man spends three hours watching television and only 30 minutes playing with his kids. Something is probably out of line there, right? It also reads, don't spend major money on minor things. If you spend more on candy than on audio cassettes like this or books, that would be foolish, right? Here is a great goal achieving tip. Don't mistake movement for achievement. It's possible to be busy all day, come home exhausted, and only then realize that very little of your day consisted of productive activities in the pursuit of your goals. Don't get faked out by being busy. The man says, I've been going, going hard all day. I've really put in the hours and the effort. But here's the major question, doing what? It isn't going, going hard all day that counts. It's the doing what, the value that counts. Another essential is concentration. This is one of those difficult things, especially in a society where there are so many voices asking for our attention. The television voices, the radio voices, your family voices, the friends voices, social voices, business voices, advertising, commercials. Isn't it amazing? You can turn off the television and the commercials keep running. How do you turn them off in your mind? That is the challenge to be mastered. The best use of time comes from putting plenty of value in it. And concentration means you take that challenge seriously. It's called careful investment for maximum results. Concentration. The big sports stars will tell you the cost of not concentrating. Just a little slip of concentration and they put one by your feet. And there goes first place and maybe the big money. So writing a letter, concentrate. Making a call, having a conversation. Trying to solve a problem, concentrate. You won't believe the effect this will have on your life. Now, there is a time to let your mind wander, but it's a time you designate specifically for that purpose. At that appointed time, you can go off for that walk on the beach or that drive to the mountains, away from business. Let the breezes blow and your mind soar. Do some dreaming. That's healthy. But do it at that pre-planned time. At all other tasks, concentrate. Another aspect of managing goals and time is constant review. There's just no way to keep on target with your priorities without this. Whether it's business goals, personal goals, family goals, or investment goals, they must all be reviewed to see if you're on track, which is all the more reason for writing them down. 
Careful goal setting could be the time management answer you've been looking for. Goals well defined and well described and well thought out make us look carefully at the time we have and how to get the most from it to make all of our dreams come true. The answers to do better come from the necessity to do better. You will undoubtedly be amazed at the ideas you can come up with for the use of your time when goals and purpose have you stimulated to the maximum. Now there is a last main point to consider. You won't get everything you want. What a statement to make after studying how to get whatever you want. But you won't get everything you want. And the reason is, it's not that kind of planet. Sometimes it's going to hail on your crop and rain on your parade. I'm sure you are very well aware of this. But in my opinion, if you work the system I've just shared with you, you will get more than plenty. More often than not, you will get what you want. Some of the best advice Mr. Shof gave me in those early years was why and how to study. That's a key word for life change, study. If you wish to be successful, study success. If you wish to be happy, study happiness. Happiness is not an accident. It is first a study and then a practice. If you wish to be wealthy, study wealth. Would you like to guess how many people make wealth a study? Right, very few. Surely, since wealth and happiness and success are all values to cultivate, you would naturally assume that most people would make a careful study of them. Why they do not is yet another example of those aspects of life that fall into the category of mysteries of the mind. Remember, major keys to your better future are going to be ideas and information. If we have any lack, it is not because we lack money or opportunity or resources. It is because we lack ideas that have taken form from information. Many years ago, I learned that some of the best advice ever given comes from the Bible. There's a phrase in that amazing book that says, if you search, you will find. So that is the way to discover ideas and life-changing information. Search. In order to find, you must search. You must go to the seminars and to the training classes. You must listen to the cassette programs that can give you breakthrough ideas. You must go and engage in conversations with people of substance. You must go looking, go searching. Rarely does a good idea interrupt you. And as you make a diligent search, you will find just the ideas you need. Now, here is the next key word in the process of seeking information that can change your life. And that word is capture. When you find a good idea, capture it. Don't trust your memory. Capture everything. Write it down. Record it. This is one of the reasons why we have put this program on cassette tapes, to capture the ideas. As a serious student of wealth and happiness, I would encourage you to make use of a journal as a gathering place for all the ideas that come your way. I consider personal journals to be one of the three treasures a wise person will leave behind. Here are those three treasures. One is your photographs. Take a lot of pictures. Being able to capture the event in a fraction of a second is a phenomenon of the 20th century and how easy it is to take phenomena for granted. I've gone to Taiwan to lecture three times in the last three years. On my last trip, there were about a thousand people in attendance for a weekend seminar. Now, if there were 1,000 people in the room, guess how many cameras were also in the room? Right, 1,000. Everyone brings a camera to capture all the events and the people, new friends, new experiences. I spend a big part of my time having my picture taken with everyone. Have you ever looked at the pictures a couple of generations back? Unfortunately, there are only a handful. But wouldn't it be great if there were hundreds of pictures to tell the whole story? So make sure you leave behind your whole story in your treasure of pictures.